everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Hey, do you ever have one of those days where you just can't get your makeup to go on right? Well, apparently I did today. This video is about how to fix makeup mistakes that are aging us and how to do it without having to start from scratch. Because if you're like me, when you get up in the morning and after you wash your face, you put on a whole mess of anti-aging serums and moisturizers and then hopefully you're putting on sunscreen and then after that you start putting on your makeup and sometimes when the makeup goes awry you don't want to have to wash your entire face either you don't have time a lot of these anti-aging serums cost a fortune and you don't want to be reusing stuff 10 minutes later they can also be irritating so if you're reapplying they can especially irritate your skin a lot of times our skin is very fragile and dry and the more you wash it and then reapply the more it gets flaky so it's not a great idea to have to start over from scratch to fix your mistakes. There are certain makeup mistakes that older women in particular tend to make, myself included, that really don't do us any good as far as looking younger or fresher, which is what we want with our makeup. So I have them all on today. You wouldn't normally do all of these at once, but if you do, then hey, apparently, you know, this is a no judgment zone. If that's the look you like, you go for it. So the problems that I have on my skin today are number one, I am overly powdered. Our eyesight is not that great. And unfortunately, just looking in a regular mirror, you can't see the details. So it's always good to have a 15X mirror so that you can check your face as you go along and check it up close to see what's really going on. Too heavy on the eyebrows is another com common mistake. Unfortunately, as we get older, our eyebrows as well as our eyelashes and all our other hair starts declining in growth and so our eyebrows get sparse from over plucking over the years and just from normal aging. Another common mistake moving down the face is the overdone overly shiny eyes. I prefer matte or satin eyeshadows for me. If you love it you can rock it but I would try to keep it a little more subtle. Uh, here the way it's aging is that it's pulling my eye down at the corner. You can see this eyeshadow comes way out here and down and I think that the shine on here kind of accentuates all the wrinkles as I you know kind of talk and move my face. All right underneath my eyes I have some lovely <laughs> Uh, creasing and settling going on. My blush is applied in a very round, heavy-handed way on the apple of my cheek, which I don't think does anything for older people. And as you can see, I also have gone way heavy-handed with my bronzer as well. I put on a really shiny hot pink lip gloss today because I think the two colors of all the color going on here and all the color going on here is a no-no. They compete with each other and it's just too bright. Uh, and the super shine on this one accentuates all my nice lip wrinkles at the, um, especially at the edge of my upper lip. And when I talk, the gloss on here really shines off each of the high points and then you can see the shadow more. So I think using a high gloss lip, lip gloss can be a mistake if you're starting to get lip wrinkles up here. All right, so those are all the mistakes that I put on my face today, and now here is how I would fix them without starting over from scratch. So what you're gonna need is a packet of makeup remover towelettes. You're gonna need a bunch of Q-tips and some waterproof eye makeup remover, just because this gel is waterproof, and a standard household washcloth. Okay, so the first thing that I would start with is the lip gloss. So I would just take the towelette and just remove that. And where this is a stain, it's not going to be as easy to remove. And I picked things on purpose that were not easy to remove. That takes off the glossy part. And as you can see, my lips are still pigmented from it. So I'm just going to take, this is an e.l.f. product. This is e.l.f. lip exfoliator. And if you want to get the color off of there as well, you can use this. So you just put a little bit of that on damp lips. Then the next thing I do is I just take a very slightly damp washcloth. It shouldn't be dripping, just very slightly damp with warm water because you don't really want to affect your mascara or your eyeliner because those are the, the two things that are good on this face. But you want to start removing some of this layer of powder. And basically all I do with this is just press it. I'm not rubbing. I'm just going to put it and press it gently onto the parts of my face that are overly powdered.
And I think you can see my a little bit of my natural skin tone is starting to come back through already. Now let's move on to these kooky eyebrows. Now to do those, I'm going to use, uh, this is simple eye makeup remover. I'm just going to put a little bit, a bit of that on a Q-tip and then I am just going to rub at each eyebrow with this to remove most of that brow gel. And then I'm just going to use a spoolie just to comb that brow into place. So I didn't take it all out, I just made it so it's not heavy-handed and overly dark. It still is filled a bit, and if you have a clear uh, brow sealer or anything like that, you could just touch that up with that and that would be great. All right, now for these eyes, you go back to your makeup removing towelette and fold it around your finger because you want a nice kind of hard edge with this, all right? So you're going to take this and you're just going to start at the outer corner of your eye and you're going to... You might have to pull your skin up if it's sagging like mine is. You start at the outer corner of your eye and just pull that right up to the outer corner of your eyebrow, removing all of the eye makeup that was below that mark. See how on this side it drags the eye down and on this side it helps that outer corner to go up? So that's how your eye makeup should be. And then I'm just going to take a dry Q-tip and rub it gently underneath my eye to get off all of that excess concealer and kind of redistribute the concealer around, but take off the excess where it was settling into the fine lines and wrinkles. So now that we have that done, we'll tackle this overly done eye. So we're just going to do the same thing as we did before, taking the makeup remover towelette and wrapping it around your finger. And I don't mind what's going on on the lid. It's really more up here that it's shiny and sparkly that kind of makes it accentuate things that are not good up there with my skin. So I'm just going to dab this up on the higher part. Can it kind of take off that super um, white sparkly eyeshadow that I had right below the brow bone? And then just a little bit of the dark blending crease color because it was just for me the purple came up just a little bit too high. I'm going to keep pressing that and keeping it away from the mascara and the eyeliner because those I like just fine. Okay, and just to fix up the eyeshadow since we removed quite a bit of it up there and now it's a little uh, uneven looking I'm just going to take one of my favorite uh, above the crease blending colors which is MAC in Malt and a big fluffy brush. Just make this upper part of my eyelid have some makeup on it because it wouldn't really, with this much eyeshadow on the lower lid, the upper lid wouldn't be completely naked like that, certainly. So we're just going to put that on and blend the original eye makeup up and into this color. And then just to put a little bit of a highlight on the brow bone, but not a sparkly highlight on the brow bone. I'm going to use MAC Blanc Type. Like that. Now for the face, now we just need to go in with makeup and kind of blend everything in. So if you have a powder foundation that you like, you can use that. I'm going to use the it, it Cosmetics Celebration Foundation. So I'm going to use the concealer end because when I took off the, the eyebrow color, um, the foundation also that I had on came off right above here. So I just need to fill in basically where I removed some of the foundation, getting some of this other stuff off. And then where this is still a little bit heavy handed, we can just use a little bit of this on the brush to kind of cover and blend that in a little bit. Okay, and without being heavy handed with the powder, I'm just going to take that and kind of even everything out because we, we removed a layer of powder and now we're adding back another layer of powder. So you don't want it to come out looking all powdery all over again. So I'm just adding in a very light layer of powder just to 
blend everything and even it all out. And for the final step is to use a setting spray. And I think that sort of helps to make the powder look more natural looking and less powdery and cakey. So I like the e.l.f. setting spray, so that's what I'm going to use. So you just take that and basically lightly spritz your face and then just wait for it to dry. And then for the lips, if you have the lip creases and you do want to use something that is a gloss, I recommend using something like the NYX Wonder Pencil. And you can line the outside of your lips with this and it will keep your lipstick from bleeding. Okay, now of course that looks kind of kooky when you first put it on, so you need to blend that in as well. So I'm just going to use that same brush with the concealer end and blend that in. So you don't want a harsh line of white around the outside of your mouth. And then I'm a big fan of the Tarte Lip Surgeons because they come in three different finishes, one of which is a matte. And uh, I really like these, especially as I'm starting to get lip wrinkles. So this one is in the color Exposed. And it's a nice nude color. It's kind of a pinky brown. So as a final step, if you're just a little bit too shiny, especially under the eyes, you can go in with just the tiniest bit of matte setting powder. This is IT Cosmetics HD Poreless Powder. And I just take a little bit of that and a tiny brush, pat it underneath my eyes so that I am not so shiny there. Of course, I get a lot of glare off my lights, so <laughs> I tend to be a little bit shiny right here. I get these funny little butterfly wings there. So I just pat that lightly where I want to keep a little bit of shine down, but I don't want to powder my whole face because, again, we've just worked to get rid of that overly powdery look. So just apply tiny bits of powder where you need it and leave the, last, the rest kind of glowy and a little bit dewy so that your skin looks more youthful and more radiant. All right, so that is the tutorial. This is the after face. Let me bring in the before face and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I feel comfortable in this. I feel more youthful. I feel more natural. So this is the way that I'm going to go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, everybody. And as always, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Take care.